Great Debaters Contest is brought to you by Safaricom M-Pesa. Bonjour, bienvenue, we are in Mombasa, the coastal city. I am Austin Nyambok and this is the Great Debaters Contest. And I am Mariam Bishar. Today our lovely hosts, the Aga Khan Academy, face off with Malindi High School and they are seeking to find answers to the question, will cash cashless transactions be the greatest step towards ending corruption? Proposal number one, you have three minutes. Hello, my name is Drusilla Talawa, I'm from the Aga Khan Academy. And I have a confession to make. Judges, you must be listening for this. We're all guilty. I'm guilty, you're guilty. Everyone is guilty. How many of you have ever been in a car and you are given a speeding ticket, but instead of that, the police ask you for kichi kidogo and you're like, okay, I'll pay this now. So you take out 100 bob or 200 bob in cash and you give it to the police officer saying, yeah, now I can pass this and I can keep moving on. So what I'm trying to say is that corruption is about culture. It's about our culture where we think Kichi Kidogo can get us out of anything. And the law is therefore not applicable to us. Corruption is also about poverty. Kenya is losing $639 billion according to News Daily a year due to tax evasion. And this is directly affecting the Kenya police officers' salaries, where the lowest ranking is paid $200 a month, way below the average cost of renting a small Nairobi apartment. So what makes you think they won't ask you for Kichi Kidogo? However, cashless transactions create a solution to this problem because they make such practices obsolete. It is easier to document and track so you can see the higher portions of financial flaws in the total economy. They create a platform for transparency between the government and its people. So let's get to the more juicy part of this argument. Okay, I think this is the juicy part, but anyways, right now and as we speak, America's corporations are sitting on close to $2 trillion in cash. This cash hoarding, by the way, accounts to $13,000 per tax-paying household. And this isn't being used to build factories, create jobs, no. They're keeping it for themselves, saying it's an insurance policy, right? Uh, right now, some people might think it's not secure. The government can tap into your accounts and change the records. What I'm trying to say is that the IBM is currently working on a project that uses digitalized financial security, where your DNA, which is unique to you, is used as validation for your account. So really, this is secure. How can we doubt something like this? Something so secure that we have no doubts at all. Denmark, Finland, Sweden, and New Zealand enable us to see the correlation between cashless transactions and corruption. Because not only have they proven that it can be implemented in every facet of human life, they are still ranked the four least corrupt countries in the world. So really, Cashless transactions are the way. Opposition, you have three minutes to make your opening submissions. Corruption, corruption, corruption. Why is it that corruption is the biggest deal in today's world? I know a number of you have been asking themselves this question for several years, and yet the answer is not known. Well, for that matter, I say that corruption is a form of behavior that departs from moral ethics and the civil virtues. And examples of these activities or behaviors include bribe, fraud, and even extortion. But again, I want you to know this, that corruption is in two forms. It could be monetary form and in the non-monetary form. So bringing the fact that saying that um, it's a kind of a claim though, I may put it, so it's like telling me that going cashless or having cash transaction will help curb corruption into this world. No, I totally disagree with that one. Because one, I say that we have countries like Denmark. Denmark is one country that has decided to go cashless and yet corruption is still gone on. What a pity. A country like Nigeria, they, are, they have introduced um, cashless policy in their country and yet corruption is going on. And the ranking index of their country, according to the countries that are corrupt in the world, is just at the top. Why? And yet you say that going cashless will be the best 
or rather the greatest step towards coming corruption, I say no. Because, you know, they have a saying that says, there are many ways of killing a rat. But again, you cannot tell me that poisoning the rat is the only best way. And that we, that's, so by saying that, you're also telling me that <laughs> um, going cashless is the best policy, the greatest goal. No, it's not. Because you may choose to, point the, to poison the rat, but again, remember, we have some rat who will dodge your poison. How are you going to get them? The same thing with corruption. So you cannot say that um, going cashless will be the better option. And now I tell you that the only better solution for us to curb corruption is not going cashless, but also changing our morals. Because if you have good morals, there's no way that you engage yourself in corrupt activities. Two, um, I also say that having good governance in the country. Because if you have good leaders who know what they want from the people, then there's no way that the country shall be involving themselves um, in corruption. Take a look at this, um, just a mere example, you know. I just want you to take yourself into this world. Try to close your eyes, all right? And imagine yourself, you're in this world where you have a great leader, people really listen to what he says. And for that reason, I also say that corruption cannot be covered by only going cashless, but we can also have an independent and strengthened judiciary system. I'm Nuri Amani from Malindi High School. Thank you. We'll now hear rebuttals. Aga Khan, you have three minutes. Good afternoon. My name is Chizi Gaku, and I'm standing before you today to tell you that corruption is an issue. We know it's an issue. And yes, not necessarily just monetary. However, the value of power, power is the root of corruption. We are not paying this money. This money is a vessel in which we're expressing our power and our control of the situation. You said that Denmark has corruption. However, as my um, proposer had previously said it has four, the four least values of corruption in the world, having been a cashless society. If you're saying Kenya cannot go cashless to solve corruption, I'd just like to point out that 15 million users are of M-Pesa in Kenya. We are almost there. It's a matter of redistribution to ensure that these funds are not being embezzled. We are one of the top five cashless societies in the world currently as we speak. It's now an issue of what are we doing about it. Kenya is losing 639 billion shillings annually due to cash due to tax evasion. If and when we do go cashless, we are gonna be able to use this money to be put and redistributed to the people who do need it. Cashless societies will reduce the disparities we have so deeply ingrained in Kenya's system. We are going to be able to take this money from the richer getting richer and the poorer getting poorer. There's going to be no need for corruption when we do not have inefficient systems. You wouldn't have to pay that 100 bob to get your passport faster if you were already getting your passport faster in the first place. Cashless societies increase accountability for the leaders we have. They will be put pressure to do their jobs with utmost excellence for the people they are serving. Cashless societies enables us to see what we're doing. It enables the transparency. It enables us to move forward and progress as a community together. Those in the informal sector, 600,000, are able to access M-Pesa. We are not leaving people behind by the digital div divide. Whether you have a credit card, whether you have a debit card, whether you have M-Pesa, you have this cashless. We are progressing with technology, and this is the only way in which Kenya is going to move forward and get rid of corruption through a cashless society. Thank you. Malindi, hi, you have three minutes for your rebuttal as well. I don't know who told you Kitukidogo involves money. It's not only money. Kitukidogo can be in any form. Corruption touches a lot of other things. So you're talking of M-Pesa, and I've been very keen. You are saying we are almost there. But have you solved the problem? Not yet. So there are other forms of corruption apart from cash. Because there are many ways through which people engage in corrupt corruption. And some of these ways are as follows. People can engage, engage in corruption through abuse of function, agency, blackmail, breach of trust, bribery, conflict of interest, 
Now, let me ask you, won't you like to be favored just because you are the host here? That is corruption. Okay, you may not give the judges anything, but you, you'll mind to be, to be favored because you are the host here. So, corruption involves many things and we don't have to blame cash. That is a false hope. Going cashless will not help anything. Another way through which we can solve corruption is by making the media free. And this will be very important in, in, in unearthing corruption because all issues will be publicized. It's just the other time where the Saharan reporters reported that 32 judges in Ghana were declared corrupt by a, an investigative journalist, Anas Aramayas Anas. He revealed a number of judges who are corrupt. Now, if we give freedom to the media, it will be able to publicize and able to tell us those who are engaging in corruption so that we can punish them. Because the journalist said, journalist is about results affecting your society in most progressive way. So let's give the media time or the mandate so that you can be able to publicize everything. And serious actions should be taken to everybody who engages in corruption. So we should not keep on blaming cash, cash, every day talking about cash. It will never help. Cash existed long, long before, and the efforts we are trying to make, we are trying to run away from it. And as my friend has told you that there are many ways of killing a rat. Okay, the way you want to use, you want to migrate from the house that have rats. Forgetting that the rats may also follow you in the other house. So that is a false, it's a false hope actually. And you cannot convince me. You cannot convince me that going cashless will not help. No. Another way of curbing corruption is through a legal framework that is double-edged and will be able to penalize both the giver and the taker. Because many a times we tend to to, to punish the taker only, forgetting that there's the user who also contributes to corruption. So let us not give ourselves false hopes that going cashless will help solve this problem. It's a big problem and we can solve it through the other ways, like the good moral values. Roger Safari, Malinda High School. Cashless transaction is not the greatest way towards curbing corruption. Thank you. like a small bank because my parents cannot they 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 do not want me to have an access to a, to a bank to, to a bank account yeah they think that i'm still young so mpesa try it helps me to save some of the money take part in the m challenge by sending your short song rap or poem about safaricom mpesa on whatsapp and you could win 1000 shillings in safaricom airtime challenge to explain how using M-Pesa, for example, as a cashless payment system would reduce corruption. And the opposition has been challenged to give more solutions to corruption aside from just instilling good morals. <laughs> Proposal number three, you have three minutes. My name is Raj. And I'd like to say a big thank you for answer, asking that question because that's really something I wanted to answer. The opposers said that corruption is in monetary forms and non-monetary forms. That's nonsense. There's only one form of corruption. There's only one reason behind corruption. That's power. Corruption is all about power. It's about those who are powerful abusing those who are poor. It's about those who are powerful abusing those who are weak. Now, in order to end corruption, the only solution is empowering those who are weak. The only solution to that is a cashless society, where when 15 million people have access to M-Pesa, where the informal sector, where villagers, where people in the agricultural sector have access to sources of finance, in this case, M-Pesa. The reason corruption occurs is because these poorer people, these weaker people are abused. And what happens, as my proposer said, 600 billion shillings is wasted every year from tax evasions. When we redirect those funds, when we redirect those funds to those who are weaker, we equate the playing field. We balance the playing field. No longer are those who are in governance, who are in office, no longer can they abuse their power that they've been given. Using M-Pesa as a form of empowerment, it's, it's gold. It's the most perfect way to establish an equal playing field among the Kenyan population. Yes, M-Pesa can be manipulated. 
Yes, there are holes behind M-Pesa. However, such a system can benefit such a population so much. When you look at villages around many parts of Kenya, they have one phone where they use M-Pesa to use transactions. It's a safe way. It's a foolproof way. It's a way for those who are weaker to get access to resources they might not have had a chance to previously. It would eliminate corruption because it would make those who are poor, it would make them wealthier. It would make those who are weaker, it would make them stronger. It would not make them reliant on the abuses, on the abuses that are in our government sometimes. Now, when we look at the use of M-Pesa, it's been extremely useful in many informal sectors. We look at the transport industry, matatus. How many of you guys travel by matatus? Now, Kenya is actually experimenting with a system of M-Pesa through the use of matatus, where you top up and you swipe your card, and there you go. You've, paid your, you've made your payment. How beneficial would that be in creating a system where matatu users often abuse, but creating a system that can be taxed, that can be monitored, and that can be supervised? M-Pesa is a suitable alternative to having cash in our pockets, and thus a society that would largely rely on cashless transactions would probably be the most efficient way of eliminating corruption because it would eliminate those who are powerless and those who are weak. Thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes to respond to the audience. You know what? It's really funny how we are very many people in this house. Everybody is actually listening to us, but some of you are not actually getting whatever we are saying. Because my colleagues over here said very many ways of dealing with corruption rather than going cashless. But to my surprise, a question was posed to me that we only raised one point. Let me tell you this. We can deal with corruption not only by addressing the moral values. Let me tell you something. With the moral values, it's like the corruption is actually ingrained in our DNA system. So by teaching the people good moral values, how to deal with corruption, creating awareness, giving the media the opportunity to actually expose those who are uh, involved in corruption. A good example is the journalist that he mentioned earlier, Anais. He was under investigation of that kind of old scenario for two good years. He was given the opportunity, right? But we find that in Kenya, they don't get that kind of opportunity. They don't get time to go to the court laws and actually follow every proceeding that is going in there. So by giving the media the power and like, you know, creating awareness to the youth and everybody around, in one way or the other, we'll actually be dealing with uh, the moral values. We'll be empowering the poor, the people that he said they're not empowered. We'll be actually empowering the same people through the moral values. To my points, let me also tell you this. Cashless transactions can be dangerous. They can be hacked. I mean, we are in Kenya, right? There was this case of NY Guru and the uh, NYA scandal, a password is stolen, right? That was only just a password, was stolen. And after that, four other companies were paid around 800, um, 826 million Kenyan shillings. But that was cashless. It was hacked. The password was stolen. So going cashless does not mean that we'll be actually curbing corruption. In one way or the other, we'll be actually giving chance to the people who can hack into accounts to continue being corrupt. So cashless transaction is not the greatest step towards corruption. There are many other steps towards uh, ending corruption. I'll give you a good example in China. They use the execution method. When you're found guilty, you are sentenced, a death sentence, either by electrocuting or being imprisoned. A good example is Zhang Xiang, who is a China railway minister. He was found guilty in the Belgium court after embezzling 400 after embezzling 47 million yen in the year 2013. And that's according to BBC News 2013. So that guy was actually sentenced. So if we try employing that kind of method, people will be scared of committing, uh, involving themselves in corruption rather than going cashless. We can also, I mean, the politicians should be committed towards the job. I'll give you another scenario. We find that recently, the Bungoma County government, they defended themselves for I mean, like the Wilbarrow case whereby one wheelbarrow was costing 100, 109,000 Kenya shillings. Well, for God's sake, we can buy a wheelbarrow for less than that. But if the politicians are actually committed, we can end corruption. Thank you. Marsha Stephen, Malinda High School.
We are now ready to hear closing statements. Proposers, you have one minute. When Obama came to this country, he said that corruption is a cancer. And those of us who are all too unfortunately familiar with cancer knows what it does. It kills, it destroys, it eats everything from the inside out. For a country like this, for a country like Kenya, for a country like Nigeria, for many countries around the world, their cancer is corruption. A cashless society would start weeding out this cancer from the inside out. It would reform this culture of corruption where we think it's okay to bypass laws, where, where we think it's okay to cheat the system. The reality is this, that every day I travel, and I travel with these car keys. In the same pocket these car keys are in is this, right? His Excellency, Mr. Kenyatta. And I know that His Excellency can, give, can get me out of anything. He can get me out of any pickle, any trouble. He can get me out of anything. Cashless societies, cashless transactions will destroy this idea, will destroy this culture at its very root. Thank you. Opposition, you have a minute as well. Well, I believe most of you here, they've got religion, right? So according to the, one of the holy books in the Bible, Judas Iscariot was paid 30 coins of silver to betray Jesus. Well, God knew very well that his plan will work well with the 30 pieces uh, of silver. He never thought of going cashless, banknotes. He never thought of that. Furthermore, years back, there was a conference, the 19th Conference of Anti-Corruption, which was prepared by Transparency International. It, it took place in Dubai. But in this conference, 134 countries were there. Among them, 100 of them were actually developing countries. And they discussed methods on how to end corruption, but they never touched on cashless transaction being the greatest way towards ending corruption. They talked of good governance. So what do you get? Cashless transaction is definitely not the greatest step towards ending corruption. Thank you. Marsha Steven, Malindi High School. Drusilla, a very good beginning. And, and I think I love your, your, your voice. I love your stage presence. I love your very good use of international and local examples. And your mastery of language is also very good and you have your coherency of argument is excellent. So keep it up. You started your team on to a very good start. Uh, Cheesy, very good role in cross-examination. And I think you also understood your role very well as a cross-examiner. Um, my only challenge was that you left the stage before the time elapsed. You had 20 seconds to go. And 20 seconds in the life of a debater is a lifeline. So you really want to make use of every second. But other than that, I think you executed your role as a cross-examiner very well. Raj, I think one of the things that I remember from your presentation is that corruption is all about power. And the question that I had, even after you have said that, is how do you equate power to cash? You know, and that is the reason then why we should go cashless so that then we nip this power and we then are a step towards fighting corruption. So that for me was a missing link. But I love your ending. You have a very thought provoking final submission. And I asked myself, you know, what is what he's saying? Is that actually the true scenario? And yes, you know, oftentimes if you have been arrested uh, for a traffic offense, the first thing every normal human being asks themselves is how do I get myself out of this? And so I, I think your ending was very thought provoking, very, you know, very good final submission, a very powerful ending that leaves us with a lot to think about. And so a very exciting uh, debate from your end. Malindi, I enjoyed your presentations and I enjoyed your reasoning, beginning with Nur. According to you, you know, cashless transactions will not end corruption, but good governance will, is it? Also, structured judicial system, if implemented properly, then it's going to curb corruption. And I think that was smart. And finally, the analogy of a rat, you know, and also how Rogers explained it. Uh, you can't move out of a house because there is a rat. If you move to a new house, the rat might, might follow you to that house that you have moved to. I think that was beautiful and intelligent. And Rogers, you define corruption in your favor. You know, just, not just looking at corruption in terms of bribery, but broaden, broadening the scope to give your team an advantage point. And that was commendable. And also you emphasized on the issue of legal system. And that is commendable. Stephen, 
Again, mass media is what you are talking about. And I loved what you said. Cashless systems will breed new corrupt practices. You know, if we are going to embrace this thing, we are going only to, to bring up or to bring about new problems as a result of cashless system of transacting money, which was commendable. To your team, it was beautiful. It was well reasoned out. Commendable job. Cashless transactions will be the greatest step towards ending corruption, like the examples that have been given. And uh, it's good to assure you that we have not received any kitukidogo, all right? <laughs> so be absolutely fair. But that was a good analogy, I think, just trying to state how uh, elements of corruption have really invaded us. And this is, a, as, as you said and reiterated what the President Obama said, it's a cancer and it's really killing. And we hope that in what we're talking about here, we are building leaders who will be making decisions tomorrow that, you know what, we need to stop this and stop this cancer completely in Kenya, all right? Because it's one of the greatest vices that is really affecting us. Um, Aga Khan Academy, Malindi High School, I want to appreciate the effort that you gave to this motion. I would say that I'm comfortable to the level to which you demystified the motion. And so for me, this was a very good debate, and I enjoyed all through to listen to all the six speakers on the stage. That was well done. Melindy High School, you have 73%. Please give them a round of applause. Aga Khan Academy, Mombasa, you have 77.7%. You are our winners for the debate. Bravo to the Aga Khan Academy and of course Malindi High did not make it easy for them. We'd like to thank all of you for watching and of course thank our sponsors Safaricom Mpesa and KBC Channel 1. Follow us on Twitter at Great Debaters EA and across all other social media platforms. I have been your host, Mariam Bishar. And I am Austin Yombok. Thank you for watching. Great Debaters Contest was brought to you by Safaricom M-Pesa.